Hi everybody, Karen Fabian here, founder of Bare Bones Yoga, and thank you so much for taking a moment or two to join me here on my YouTube channel. I want to talk to yoga teachers specifically about a conversation I had recently with a student after class. She came up to me after class and she said that it was the first time that she got into a full backbend, otherwise known as wheel or urdhva dhanurasana. And if you've been a yoga teacher like me, when you teach this pose, you'll see a lot of different expressions of this posture. And on some level that's great because it really uh, helps to highlight the individual nature of practicing uh, yoga. However, there are a lot of different things that you can do as a teacher to help make this posture more accessible. And I'm going to share with you some of what I did in that particular class to help students access this pose. One thing that I want you to remember is that when we do a pose like wheel, we're moving the spine into extension. So we're taking the spine, which in standing is obviously just up and down, right, straight, and we're bending it backwards. Now, I don't know about you, but there's really nothing in my day where I'm bending this way. There are plenty of things where I'm bending this way. But this is one of the challenges that we have, uh, not only as students, but as teachers and our students will have, which is that moving the spine in this direction is something that most people are really unfamiliar with. So the nervous system tends to <clears throat> kind of put the brakes on movements that may be unfamiliar to us. And it can create a little bit of, you know, just nervousness and confusion and disorientation, not in a bad way, but just kind of, again, putting the brakes on things. Hey, this feels kind of new. The other thing to keep in mind is that in order for us to extend the spine so much, completely going up and back, right, of course we're doing it from the ground, but just kind of this movement here, we need to have pretty good flexibility in the hip flexors. When we flex the hip, we shorten these muscles. When we extend the hip, we lengthen them. So it can be really helpful in your sequence to do a number of things like lunges and really speak to the lengthening action of uh, the muscles that are on the front of the body when we're taking poses like warrior one, warrior two, uh, airplane pose, dancer's pose, anything where we're taking the hip into extension. However, one of the really key things for students is to help them understand that in order to do a back bend, they need to create a little bit of mobility in the thoracic spine, so here. So one of the things that can be helpful is to do a pose like camel, where they're on their knees, have them actually put their hands on their ribs and move a little bit into that uh, posture, feeling how the bend is coming from the middle of the spine, where it's already really kind of locked up because of the bone structure. You can also do that in different things as well. You could have people take an eagle arm bind and do a little bit of spinal extension there. And you can work it into uh, different sequencing uh, uh, for balances, where you're having them do something like dancer's pose, where they're also bending through the thoracic spine, which is definitely something they're going to need to be doing when they come into full wheel. Another thing that you can do, and for this particular student it was really helpful and she said it was really the key to helping her get up, is I have students do what might be something you've done before, put a block between the thighs, and then I also have students put a block between the feet. So I have them move it from between the thighs for one or two rounds of bridge to putting it between the feet for a round of bridge, and then I have them come into wheel. So let me share with you a little bit about why this is important. So when we take the spine into full extension, it can cause some compression around the lower back area. So if you look at the sacrum and its position between the two pelvic bones, as we go up and back, if the hips are externally rotated like this, it can create a little bit of compression. If we keep the hips more neutral, we get a little more of that up and back motion. That's why the block between the thighs not only strengthens the adductor muscles, which are the inner thigh muscles, but it also keeps the hips from external, externally rotating. However, sometimes the body can be pretty sneaky, and the hips uh, will stay fairly neutral, or maybe they'll turn out a little bit, and what the student will be more aware of, or unaware of, is the feet are turning out as well, because generally speaking, to turn open the hips, you have to turn open the feet. So sometimes having them put the block between their feet 
when they come up as a bridge, where it's not a full back bend, it's more of just natural curves of the spine, at least gives them the sensation of keeping their feet straight. And then once you take the block away completely and you have them come into wheel pose, you can speak to the memory, the muscle memory, the sensation memory of inner thighs rolling in and down, feet staying straight, and that can help them keep a little more of a neutral position in the hips rather than externally rotating them, keep less compression on the low back, and allow them to get up and back with a little more ease. One more thing in regards to this particular thing. The reason the feet turn out most of the time is because the gluteus maximus muscle, which is our prime mover for hip extension, also externally rotates the hips. And so if the user of the muscle, meaning the person, the student, isn't aware of that, when they go up and back, they're using glute max, not only for hip extension, but external rotation. And that's the reason for the block between the thighs, but I bet you, you might not have known that because no one shared it with you. And I bet many teachers don't know that because the presentation of anatomy is not always explained correctly or fully. So now you know, that's, that's the reason, that's the prime reason why you wanna have a block between the thighs. And you want to, what I do, is share that with the students so that they learn a little bit about what is the role of the gluteus maximus, this big muscle on the back of the hip. Completely different function-wise from the glutes on the side of the hip, glute medius and glute minimus. So here we are, you know, kind of presenting it to our students. One more thing I want to say, which is again some feedback that the student shared with me, which I thought was so interesting. She said, the other thing that I found so helpful is that in your presentation of the posture, you just basically presented it and said, come into wheel. And she said, in a lot of the classes I go to, there's a lot of wishy-washiness around wheel. If you want to do it, if it's in your practice, um, I invite you to if you choose. And I think this can be one of the things that as yoga teachers, we can kind of feel a little bit of concern about teaching certain poses. Maybe we're in our heads and thinking, oh, I know this pose is hard for people and I want to give them an out. And I think there's a couple of ways to think about that. Of course we want people to do what they feel comfortable with and we never want to force somebody to do something. However, it's interesting when you think about our word choice as teachers. If we're using a lot of word choice as teachers that's really heavily couched in permission and do whatever you want, for a lot of students, or sometimes for students, if they're looking for a way out, they may not feel a sense of urgency or maybe a sense of just even support to go into a certain posture, especially ones that we know are challenging, even just from a physical movement standpoint. It's not to say that you're going to stand over people and say, do this pose, do this pose. However, there's something to be said for just basically stating it like, we're just going to do this. We're just going to come up into wheel. And remember, if you build them up to this point with really good cues, and you have an understanding of the anatomy behind it, you can answer any questions fully at the end of class that completely fill in any of the blanks in their understanding. And even if they don't come up to you after class, you've already been peppering your sequencing with a little bit of anatomy teaching along with the specific cues, so you've really demystified the pose for them. For many students, and this student said the same thing, for many years she's been practicing and people are just basically saying, okay, now come into wheel. Rather than throughout the sequence talking about the thoracic spine, qualities of the thoracic spine, as, as you're doing certain preliminary postures that the teacher knows are a prep for wheel, making that relationship between we're doing this now and hey, guess what? When we do wheel later, you're going to need to bend in, in this area of the spine as well. So I kind of think of it like a comedian when they have a particular joke and then they do something else in their stand-up and then they come back to that joke, maybe in a different way, but they call back on that theme. This is something you can do in your yoga sequencing, but you've got to have a good understanding of anatomy so it all makes sense. So I'm going to end this here. I hope you found this helpful. I want to invite you to go to my website. I'll include the link. It's called barebonesyoga.com. And right there on the home page, you're going to see a number of free resources for teachers, including a link to join, to subscribe to my anatomy work group uh, on Facebook. 
You're going to also see a link to subscribe and to join my podcast uh, called Conversations for Yoga Teachers. And you're also going to see a way to join my VIP mailing list. Once you're in my online community, you're going to get a lot of free information about yoga, yoga teaching, uh, yoga anatomy, which is my passion, and a lot of other things as well. So thank you so much for watching. Namaste.